I'm Michelle and welcome to today's video. We're going to be talking about foods that soften the stool, fluids that help to soften the stool and also too some foods that you might want to try to steer clear of that actually make the stool really hard and lumpy. Just take a quick look on the screen now. We're aiming ideally for a type 3 to 4 stool which is a smooth well formed stool and it's a sausage shape. So if your stool is like a type 1 or 2 which is hard and lumpy or little lumps then that's uh, too hard. That's going to be really hard to empty using the correct bowel movement. Or if this, alternatively, if the stool's too soft, like a type six or seven, it's going to be too watery. Let's start with fruits. So we've got grapes. We've got kiwi fruits. These are a great food to, or great fruit to help you keep the stool soft. We've got our stone fruits, like our peaches and our nectarines. We've got pears. And one of my favourites is prunes. So prunes are a great food also too to help you keep the stool soft. If we look at our vegetables, foods like your uh, our vegetables like your green beans, you can um, have the capsicum foods, the spinach, and also to your cruciferous vegetables like your broccoli and your cabbage. But just be careful when you're introducing these types of foods, particularly your cruciferous vegetables, because they can make you quite gassy. So you want to introduce these foods in small amounts and slowly. If we move across now to some of the whole grain cereals, uh, some of the cereals that you can include in your diet are your multigrain bread. So if you can actually see the grains, that's a great way to know that you've got a good bread there. You've got your brown rice, so the husk is still on the outside of the rice. And some of your whole grain cereals, and I love oats, they're a great for, um, source of soluble and insoluble fibre for the bowel. Another little grain here, and this is actually a bulking agent, and this is called psyllium. Now psyllium is a great little um, supplement you can use, little fibre supplement you can use to actually uh, soften the stool, but you've got to increase it gradually. So basically when you start with your psyllium husks, um, you start with half to one teaspoon and you might increase to two teaspoons. Once again, being careful with the psyllium because it can actually make you quite gassy when you start out. If you're um, someone who's keen on your spices, so um, your red chilies are great. We're gonna have chili flakes here and also two curries. So curries and chilies are great foods for increasing bowel motility. Also will help to soften the stool and get the stool through faster. And finally, some snacks. So these are sort of like your more occasional foods, but your unsalted and unbuttered popcorn, great. And also too, a couple of pieces of chocolate. So that's something we all like to hear, isn't it? So chocolate can also be a great stool softener. So to help you keep your stool soft, you also need to think about how much fluid you're taking in. So fluid's really important, and I probably should have mentioned when I was talking about fruit, some of the fruits that we had before, they've got lots of fluid in them, so they're actually a really good source of hydration. But in terms of fluids, we're aiming most of us for two litres of fluid a day. So this can vary according to some medical conditions. This can vary according to how much exercise you're doing, the temperature, your body weight. So some of us need a little bit less fluid than others. But in terms of how much we need, it's the two litres. So I've got a litre here of our water. So you can see these are three fairly large glasses. So your fluid can be um, ideally made up of water. That's, that's the drink of choice, isn't it really? But if you're not really a great water drinker, some other things that can help you soften your stool up some prune juice so prune juice is a great little uh, additive you could have pear juice I've got pear juice here you could have your decaffeinated tea so your chamomile tea here you could also have regular tea and regular coffee too that'll have a bit of a diuretic effect so it can irritate the bladder and make you more prone to bladder urgency if you're living with pelvic floor problems and also too it's going to divert fluid away from your bowel isn't it we want the fluid in your bowel so finally now let's look at some of the foods that you might choose to avoid and these are foods that firm the stool. So now if we're looking at the foods that are likely to firm your stool that you might want to limit and not to say that you can't have them but you might want to be aware that some of these are the types of foods that can firm the stool. So if we look at here we've got mashed potato, we've got uh, white rice that's been boiled, we've got um, white obviously cheese and we've got um, white bread and interestingly white marshmallows and I can't tell you the reason for white marshmallows but these are these are known to be uh, foods that will firm the stool and back here we've got some pretzels they look brown because they're baked 
but they're white on the inside. So it's quite interesting, isn't it, when you see that these foods tend to be white. So that's not really a rule of thumb, but the whiter foods might be something to keep in the back of your mind, that they, these are foods that might be foods that firm the stool. Two, if you're looking at the breads, look at the comparison with the white bread here and the grains in the, in the whole grain bread. So just little things, little tips to remember about foods that are going to be more likely to soften the stool and foods that are going to be more likely to firm the stool. So let's review what we've talked about. We've talked about all the types of foods that will soften the food that you might like to in include in your diet. We've talked about the fluids and the really big importance of hydration. We talked about the foods that are more likely to firm the stool that you might want to limit. And we really talked about the importance of um, these being on a regular basis, introducing these gradually. And if you're already constipated, making sure that you address the constipation first before you start to introduce these foods. So thanks so much for watching today. I really hope this video helps you manage your bowels and keep your stool soft. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.